When I'm working in the studio, I'm always looking for easy light setups that will look good straight at a camera, as well as give me creative freedom when posing. With this two light setup, it's guaranteed that you're gonna get amazing results in the studio. Let's go ahead and break this down and let's cover todo el pedo. In order to create this shot, you're gonna need to place your key light in butterfly light position, which means positioned above the subject, angle down, so that we have the catch lights in the upper middle part of the eye. Now, in order to offset my light, I love using the shorty extension arm, and this allows me to shoot right underneath the modifier and the light. And what I love about it is that it's cheap, only $35, it's small, so it fits in my camera bag, and let's be honest, a lot of us don't have the ability to use these big bulky booms in the studio, so this is a great alternative. As for my key light, I'm using the Westcott FJ400 with the 24 inch beauty dish set to power 6.5. Now keep in mind, you can do this with any strobe, whether it's a speed light or a 200 watt strobe. As far as the modifier, it does not need to be a beauty dish, even though that's what I prefer because I love that beautiful blend between soft light and hard light. But if you have a 36 inch Octabox, a 28 or a 26, use basically whatever you have. But the key thing here, whatever modifier you end up using, is get your subject about six feet away from the background because we really don't want too much light to spill onto the background because we wanna be able to control that, which we're gonna get into in a moment. Once I have my key light in position, the key ingredient here is to use fill light on the shadows. And in this case, I'm using an eye lighter, but keep in mind, you don't have to use an eye lighter. You can use a standard five in one reflector, which let's be honest, most of us already have, or you can use a white foam core board. So basically you just want it right underneath the subject and tilted, basically creating clamshell lighting so that we get beautiful, even light. And this is basically what allows us to get that creative freedom when posing. Your subject can look down, look to the side, and you're gonna get beautiful, even light because that light's gonna be bouncing because of that silver reflector. For step number two, in order to make this image pop, I added a speed light behind my subject about three feet from the ground, and I'm just using a bare speed light. And the reason why I have this positioned low is because I want it to hit the background and light up the background on the bottom part and create a gradual gradient from bright to dark. Now, knowing that my subject's face is gonna be on the top third of the image, essentially what I'm doing is I'm purposely making the top part of the image a little bit darker so the face pops, and I have that beautiful brightness at the bottom just to add a little bit of color. And one thing I wanna emphasize is you do have to experiment with the tilt of that background light, just getting it perfect so we get that nice beautiful gradient from bright to dark. Now, in this case, I'm using the Westcott FJ80 speed light set to power 6.5. Now I wanna jump into Capture One in Photoshop to show you how awesome the straight out of camera results look. If I zoom in here, this is the before. So straight out of camera already looks fantastic. If I push Y on the keyboard, you'll see that I didn't have to do too much, just setting up a couple of base layers. Now, one of the things I did forget to mention is when I'm using glasses, that eye lighter adds a nice reflection into the glasses. So this was my setup here in Capture One before and after, just a little bit of subtle details. And then in Photoshop, all I needed to do was do a little bit of post-processing on the frequency separation and dodge and burn. And if you're curious on how I do this process, I have plenty of tutorials on my YouTube channel. So before and then after, and then just finalize it with some color grading. And I also did liquefy some of the little pants there just to bring it in just a little bit. So once again, let me zoom in right about here. This is the before and then the after in Photoshop, just giving that image just a little bit of a pop. If you enjoyed this video, I have other behind the scenes videos covering other light setups as well as editing tutorials. So don't forget to subscribe and to look at my Instagram because I post a lot of helpful content. You guys have a beautiful day and I will see you guys on the next one.